Hello, sixth grade. Glad everybody is here today. Hey, um, some of us were able to go over our warm up yesterday. Some of us were not. So um, if you were in the I've already been over this camp, just please be patient and listen to me while I do the first problem again. And then we will also go over the second problem in this. So first we have a four points are labeled on the number line. Guys, I have promised my classes that the state of Texas loves us doing stuff on a number line. So be ready for something like this to um, show up on star. OK, so the first thing that we want to do when we see a number line is see where um, everything is. Find where your zero is. Find how much the hash marks um, are worth. So here it looks like two hash marks go up to the number one. So they're about a half. It, it's about 0.5 between each mark. Right. So we are looking for which point represents the value of the the absolute value of negative half. Guys, um, those little lines seem to throw some of us for a loop. We forget or we just completely ignore them. Uh, absolute value means, I know some of you already know this and you're so good at it. The absolute value means it's the distance from zero. It does not mean opposite of, but it will always be positive. The absolute value, of course, will always be positive because we can only have positive distances. So the distance from zero, negative one half is half away from zero, but it's going to be positive. So if I've already done all of that work and figured out what's going on on my number line, I know that zero is here. I know that one is here and I know that each of those marks is a half. I then know what the straight lines are They They mean absolute value and it means it's going to be a positive distance from zero and negative one half is one half away from zero. So R is going to be our best bet for, um, for number 19 that, uh, R is one half away from zero. <clears throat> the table below shows the relationship between R and S where S is the independent variable. Okay, guys, <clears throat> we haven't spent a lot of time on independent variable, but here's what I know about independent variable. It's the X value and it's X, which so now it's also S. And if I make a table like this, it's going to be on the left side. Those are all the things I know about the independent variable. Because what happens on the other side, the Y or the, what do they have, R, the Y or the R um, depends on what the X is, okay? So that's how this is, um, we can set that up. And for me, I'm going to make myself a table like this because this doesn't work for me. <clears throat> I am going to do, actually, you know what I think I'm going to do? I might do... X, leave myself some room so that I can see how it got, or S, from S to R. So if S is, let's see what it, it just goes one through six, right? So one, two, three, four, five, let's move it up, and six, right? And so this is one sixth. Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to buy clues as I or think of clues. Huh. Okay. It's going to be a fraction every time. Oh, wow. It's a different fraction so far every time. Um, but I kind of have something in my head about, about what might be working. And I'm getting my, because I'm making fractions, this is going to be four is going to go to two thirds, five is going to go to five sixths, and six is gonna to go to one. Okay, here's what I noticed as I was writing those down. I noticed that this is um, S divided by six. I'm making it that way because they only did fractions. It's the same thing as we know. It's the same thing as S divided by six. Those two things are equivalent, but I'm noticing that I only have fractions over here. 
Okay, these are a little harder to look at. But if you'll notice, if I take five and divide it by six, this one is still S divided by six. Remember, if you put a number over another number and it, over the same number, you're going to end up at one. So this one is S divided by six. Let's see if this fits for uh, these other two. Well, if I have two and I divide it by six, that is going to simplify. I'm going to divide this by two. I'm going to divide this by two and I will end up equaling one third. So this one is S divided by six. And this is, let's see, let's do it over here. Uh, three divided by six. If I divide this part by three and divide this part by three, I am going to end at one half. So this one is also S divided by six. My four is a little bit harder, um, but it shouldn't be really, right? Four divided by six. And I'm going to divide this part by two. Nope. Yes. And this part by two. I thought I'd made a mistake. I did. And I'm going to end up at two thirds. So all of these are S divided by six. Ms. Thurman, I, I don't have that choice. I don't have that option. That is very true. But I am looking, so I know it's not these, right? There's no subtraction. There's no any of those things. However, is this true that S divided by six or S divided by six, all of those are the same thing as S times one sixth or because it's multiplication and we can make it turn back and forth. We can order doesn't matter. You can say one six times S. Uh, since I'm recording, if you still have a question about that, you may hang on to it and we will discuss it on my return. And um, then we will go over the rest of the warm ups when I get back.